All right, so today we're gonna check out this right here. This is the Phil Jones Base Engine 17. Now, I actually just finished a live stream. Finished, here's the thing. The stream cut out about 10 minutes in. The audio, we were just having issues. I don't know what it is, but I promise I'm gonna figure it out for next time. So here's what I did. After 10 minutes, I just told the chat, tell me all your questions, give me all the things you wanna hear with it, and I'm gonna spend the next 30 minutes doing exactly what I was gonna, just without you guys watching. So I finished the live stream, I unboxed it, gave it my first impression, played a few different contrasting pieces through it, just to see what it sounds like and put it through its paces. I just didn't get to do it with you there. My apologies, next time, hopefully we'll get it figured out. In the meantime, let's watch the replay, starting with unboxing. We do our unboxings around here with a machete because why wouldn't you? Here we go. Is this the best angle for this? Probably. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna come out from this side. This way. Hold on. Hold on. Top's kind of already done. There we go. Everyone always laughs at the machete, but it's very on brand, very on point. By the way, now that's a knife. If you guys have any questions, if there's anything you wanna hear, you wanna hear slap, you wanna hear playing with a pick, drop tuning, C tuning, metal. I mean, please, if you have any requests, let me know because I've got, like I just said, I've got a whole bunch of backing tracks here that we can load up and I'll play them with you, for you. Oops, I hit the wrong button, sorry. <laughs> All right, Um, you know what? Actually, a better way to do this yeah, let's do it over here with the overhead camera. I'm gonna put the box on this side because I wanna see what's down there. Let's see, can you guys see what's going on in there? It does look like it. So right up top, we got the power cable. I already have a power cable routed up to the desk so I can just drive, uh, you know, pop it in. I'm not gonna use this one, but it's a UPC. They're all pretty standard. So, let's get styrofoam out. Okay. Oh. All right, that's how she looks. Let me go back to this angle. All right. There's nothing else in that box. Ugh. Not bad. Okay. This right here is what we're working with. I'm going to show you this side of it first. I'm going to get a little better angle. Does that work? Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, this angle, that's going to be for later because I am going to put a mic in front of it and we are going to see, you know, what it would sound like in the studio if you were doing that kind of thing. And we're also going to dial in a tone up top. Hold on, let me turn down the brightness. Is that better? Yeah, a little bit less glare. So as you can tell, this is totally live. Uh, we, we are very relaxed around here. I'm not uh, planning uh, anything. As you can see, we're just kind of rolling off the cuff. So chat, I'm keeping an eye on you. John says there's some audio clipping. Okay. Well, I'll keep an eye on that. I'm not seeing anything on my end, which means it's probably a speed issue, internet problem. But John, I'll keep an eye on it. If it persists, please uh, let me know. Keep keep telling me what's going on. And by the way, uh, I'm recording this to disc. So I, if anything's kind of wonky, I'll have it later and I'll be able to upload it full quality. So yeah, as, a, as an amplifier, it's very light, right? I can, let's see, is this a better angle? Let me look at it. It's not even the size of my torso. I can throw it and catch it. <laughs> All right, um, let's go ahead and just do what, what I call my first impressions. Let's see what knobs it has. I'm just gonna plug in and just kind of like dial in some tones for the very first time, All right? I, um, I have no preconceived notions. I've not used this before. As far as I know, it just came out a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago or something like that. So um, literally I have no idea what it sounds like. Let's check it out.
looks like what we got up top is what? We got a line in for two, uh, you know, I guess if you want to do backing tracks, you could go left and right. Or if you had uh, a synth bass, you know, a uh, key bass or something like that, or a double bass. Well, double bass wouldn't have two inputs though. Um, so clearly, yeah, it's meant to run multiple sources if you have them. Input for your bass, uh, selectable between active and passive, and then also a mute. We've got an attenuator for your bass guitar, which isn't so much, uh, if it's anything like the other Phil Jones bass, it's not like a preamp gain where the harder you drive it, the, the better the amp sounds. It's more along the lines of, uh, you know, sending the full bandwidth of, of your signal. Three band EQ. Normally Phil Jones has got like four or five, I think I've even got one with six. So three bands this time. It's not exactly the same as, you know, what they normally uh, put out there. Then we've got an auxiliary in that can go push. Oh, okay, so one side's probably the Bluetooth and then the other side would give you, um, you know, there's a uh, an eighth inch cable. So if you wanna go Bluetooth from your phone or plug your phone directly in, and then you have control over that. Your master volume headphones, so you can use it as a practice amp. There's our power switch and a line out as opposed to an XLR. There's no, okay, so there's no XLR DI out on this. So if you're going to use this uh, and send it to the house PA, you probably still need an XLR output or Again, you can just go out of the line out and into a uh, into a DI. So they didn't put that on there, unless I'm missing it in the back bottom anywhere else. Oh, and this is kind of cool. I didn't see this, but it's got one of these. You know, so if you wanted, if we were looking at it from this angle, and I wanted to tilt it up a little bit, that's always kind of handy. So now, if I'm standing here, right before it was pointed kind of more at my belly. Now it's angled up a little bit more towards my face. Okay, so let me think how we're going to monitor this. It's totally fine. I wasn't sure. Whenever I do these live streams, I don't know <laughs> what I'm gonna get, how it's gonna work. And so I just try to be prepared. I've got, um, I had uh, an XLR cable pulled off so that I could, whoops, uh, take a DI from it. But here's what we'll do. We'll just come out of the line out here and I'm gonna run that in. You guys can't, well, hold on, if I do this real quick. Ah. I'm gonna run that into the high Z input of my Apollo twin, right? So basically I'm gonna use the twin as a DI and we're just gonna kind of run out of this as if it were like the through cable of a DI or maybe, you know, the thing that you would plug into your amp. So let's, we'll be able to mic this thing up as well. Let's go ahead, does it power on? Whoo, there we go. All right, let me zoom in so we can just see the front face here. So you guys can see what I'm doing as I'm dialing in tones. That's, yeah, that's centered enough. Okay, let me do this, okay. I'm getting signal from the amp and from the, the DI. Okay, so check this out. The way I'm gonna do this, we'll start by this. Again, I call this my first impression. As you can tell, I haven't even plugged in the bass. I haven't tweaked any of these knobs yet. So let me come at this from the standpoint of it's, it's an amp and I'm in the room, right? So you guys won't hear the DI from it yet. Let's just get a feel for the volume because if it's a bass amp, that's what we all wanna know, right? It's loud enough. Does it carry? Is it gonna throw the room? So let's start there. I don't have my headphones in. You guys probably can't hear uh, too much and that's okay, that's kind of the point. Let me go to passive because this is a passive bass. EQ is working. All right, so I'm at like 50% volume right now. I'm just gonna back up from the instrument. The EQ is pretty much flat. Let's see what it sounds like. I'm gonna go full volume. Crunchy town, so let's pull back the level a little bit.
All right, let's pump some low end into it. It's very, uh, you know, decent volume for this room. As you can see, we're pretty much maxed out. So um, let me just play with the EQ for a second and see what that does in the room. That was bugging me. Okay, so as far as, you know, volume goes, it's it's a, you know, practice amp size. Maybe small gigs, but again, look over here, I'm maxed out on the volume, pretty much maxed out on the level. That's just, I'm backing it off to prevent clipping, I suppose. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it, it's not a loud, loud single amp, but again, like, I mean, I mean, take a look at it. It's got one speaker that's gotta be, five or seven inches i'm guessing not a, not a very big driver so this is not meant to you know be be uh filling out an entire stage right it's definitely a practice amp jazz cocktail gigs or something where you just want a personal monitor wedge you know and actually even probably this is it makes it even better yeah just that little thing right there tilting it up Yeah, I, it's loud for a practice amp. Again, it's not really gonna, um, whatchamacallit, not gonna throw a huge room or anything like that. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna uh, which, level it out, flatten the EQ. I'm gonna turn the volume all the way down. Let's turn that all the way down and get that all the way down just to make sure the only thing coming out of the, the line out, that's this part up here, the only thing coming out up there is going to be uh, the bass guitar itself. And like I said already, I'm gonna run that into the Apollo Twin and basically use the Twin as a DI. So let me throw on my headphones. We're no longer monitoring the uh, the amp itself. We're gonna, jeez, hold on. Let me throw on my headphones. Okay. Let me come on over to here. All right, let's turn on the bass. Let's get rid of that compressor that's not even on. Okay, so now we're basically using, um, let me go to this screen. Okay, so now we're using this essentially as a DI with a three band EQ. Do the traditional smiley face. I'm gonna turn off my microphone so we don't hear the uh, finger striking from there. Let's just see what the EQ is doing. So you can see we're getting a little bit of um, that light's peaking a little bit, especially when I'm attacking the strings really hard. So I'm just gonna back off of it. Now we have a much kind of cleaner sound. Very deep. Let me gain it up a little bit. So I can make it louder for us to listen to. Too loud. Okay, I'm gonna turn. Uh, I'm gonna turn my mic off again and just play around with the settings a little bit.
By the way, this is a passive uh, J bass essentially. Aguilar pickups, volume and volume and tone are 100% all the way up. Not bad. I dig the slap tone. I dig the scooped out tone. Uh, these strings are nickel wound, so they're a little more muffly sounding. They're not quite as bright as stainless steel. Very nice. Let's go uh, do the opposite. I'm going to uh, add mids, cut out some of that top end, maybe... Uh, Ooh, is that a little more bottom end to that? That actually kind of works. Oops, let me pull up that song I was playing at the beginning. My keyboard is to stop the song. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Lots of low end in there. A very bitey mid range. That's my bridge pickup. No, that's both pickups on together. Okay, here's bridge pickup. Let me do that one more time. Same song. Two. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Okay, let's back off the mids, boost a little more low end. I like it. Hell yeah. So very simple to use three band EQ. Uh, all you got to do is, you know, back off your gain to, uh, you know, the point where it's the, the clip lights not going off. Uh, for however hard you're digging in. Three band EQ, lots of boom. Uh, we can scoop it out and get it nice and deep. We can add some mids uh, to get you know those notes to kind of punch a little harder. And then yeah, top end for sizzle. Good for slap tone. Let's try some other things. I'm gonna pull in some other tracks. Um, oh, and you know what? Also, let's do this, hold on. I do wanna throw a mic up on this thing. Sorry, I did that too soon. It's got a... Uh... One thing a lot of people don't try with these small lamps is uh, is uh, like rock tone. Miking up a small speaker. When you think rock, you think Ampeg 8x10 refrigerator. Let's see what, uh, I don't know. Let's see if I can get this over there first. Um, let's see what a SM, a Beta 52, you know, kind of almost right up. Actually, it's already almost the perfect height. Here's what we're looking at. Beta 52, kind of where the, the edge of the cone meets the, you know, the center. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so let's see if I can't dial in. 
a decent rock tone. I'm going to grab uh, a Sadowski bass. No, no, let's play the same one. Same bass, so it's not biased. Let me grab a pick. <laughs> All right, let me go back to this screen right here. Let's turn off the DI. Now the microphone is on. We're getting signal. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off this mic so that you're not hearing it here. And I'm gonna turn on the beta uh, 52 on this side. So give me one second to make that transition. I suck at playing so bad with the pick. So again, you're not hearing this mic, that's purely the Beta 52. I'm gonna gain it up a little bit more and then I'm gonna start kind of playing with the EQ here. So let's see what we come up with. Turning off my mic. Okay, so um, as far as like a fat general rock tone, I dig it. The treble's all the way up and we're not getting too much sizzle and attack, but check this out. I might be able to get that just by moving the mic a little bit closer to the center. I'm gonna turn my mic off. Let's compare, because again, I'm, I'm almost maxed out on top end. I can give it a little bit more juice, but before I do that, I wanna see if I can get it brighter sounding just by moving the mic, because that could be the problem. So I'm turning off the mic, this one. And if you're hearing any distortion, um, I don't know if you guys are watching, you can't because I'm sorry, I had the wrong screen on, uh, but it's not clipping up there, watch. Okay, speak of the devil. <laughs> I just started the clip a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so any, any uh, dirtiness you're hearing is actually coming from the preamps because the bass isn't, uh, the bass amp isn't driving that hard. Um, let's just do the opposite. I'm going to boost the mids, cut the, the low end a little bit, I'm gonna kill my mic again. Kind of a little more balanced. And to be honest, if I'm miking up an amp, this is kind of what I want. I want some mid-range punch because that's kind of what you get uh, from, from miking up bass amps. You get more character and more vibe in the, the low mids and upper mids. I don't know, at least to my ears, that's what, they, what, what I get.
sick. Let me play to a song um, where we can actually use this mic'd up bass amp. Um, hold on, I'm just looking for looking for anything I can play to that's in my tuning. <laughs> I've got so many songs in here. How about this one? Yeah, I'd use that tone. Not bad. I'm gonna go back to um, not using the, uh, the 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 microphone. Let's switch back to the DI. So I'm gonna turn the volume knob all the way down there, and let's find something. Okay, direct. The DI is back on now. Let's play something that I might use the DI for. How about this one? I'm going to dial in a bit of a deeper tone for this one. Scoopy and woofy. Could I say it out loud? How I'm feeling? How I'm feeling? Cause every time you're around, the emotion wins. Here we go again. I'm swimming in I forgot how the song went. That's a very deep kind of boomy tone. As you can see what we're doing, we're scooping out all the top end, all the mids, boosting the hell out of the low end. And um, yeah, very versatile with a three band EQ. So let's see, who is this for? Well, number one, this is a great practice amp because it has all the practice features. 
I don't want to say it doesn't have all of the live performance features, but it is missing, I guess, two that I can think of. So as a practice amp, what does it have? Headphone out. That's fantastic. Right now I'm monitoring through my computer, but I can very easily come into here. Uh, running in tracks, either as Bluetooth. Yeah, so you see if I push that down, it switches from the aux in here to the wireless. I can run in um, tracks this way if I didn't want to run them this way. I could also run a synth bass or a keyboard or a double bass or just some other signal. So you can get two things with three band EQ, with monitoring, with tracks. So as a practice tool, what else would you need? I can't think of anything. Oh, okay. And then obviously the speaker built in. <laughs> so you can use it, uh, you know, uh, just acoustically in the room or with headphones. So as a practice amp, like I said, I can't think of anything that it's missing as a live amp for something you might take on the stage with you. Obviously the form factor is small. Sounds just fine with by putting a mic in front of it. So you can get a good rock tone, get a good mic'd up cabinet sound, but it is quiet from the standpoint of it's, only so big it's one seven or eight inch driver and uh you know there's no extension cab so i said okay so i said for a live tool it's only missing a handful of things one um an extension out so that i could connect it to multiple speakers that might be helpful xlr in case i want to run it to front of house which again we're doing it by just running out of the line out it's nice that they included that uh but an xlr would be i don't want to say more professional but that's what you would need if you were using this on stage so that's why I say it's more of a small gig practice routine. Like that's probably the client that they're targeting with this rather than someone taking it to venues because then you also need to bring a DI. And then I guess if there's one thing it's missing uh, and on top of an extension speaker and an XLR tuner, but I'm just being picky, <laughs> right? I'm looking for things that it doesn't have. It's got most of them. So as a small pick it up, leave it in your, you know, leave it in the room of your house. So you just, you have a practice amp. There's something that's always there. Definitely this thing's, um, uh, what you want to call it? This is a good piece for that. If you're going to be playing small jazz cocktail gigs, restaurants, small bars, places where it's not big, aggressive, slamming drum kit and wall of sound guitars, obviously, um, you know, this won't compete with that. And um, yeah, as far as the tones, I didn't have any trouble getting deep, slap, finger funk, or rock. So with a three band EQ and a passive J bass, you know, there wasn't any, uh, I didn't pull any tricks. I didn't do anything to deceive you. <laughs> so that right there, my friends, is the Phil Jones Bass Engine 17. Pretty awesome. Phil Jones, thank you so very much for sending this my way. Anyone, if you want to check one out for yourself, there's links or a link. Pretty sure it's only available at Sweetwater at the moment, but if there's more Tomon and Zounds and Amazon, the other places, I'll, I'll, I'll drop links uh, in the description so you guys can go check it out for yourself. But in terms of a practice amp, in terms of being lightweight, easy to bring to the gig and that kind of stuff, um, yeah, I'd say it's definitely a win. But again, keep in mind, it's small. It's a small speaker. I don't know what the wattage is, but I imagine it's pretty low. So if you're hoping that this will compete with your rock band, it probably won't. But uh, you, you you probably don't want something like this. You probably want something bigger like the, uh, can you see this one over here? There you go. If that's what you want to do, then these big dog over speaker, speakers over here is what you're after. This is the, uh, huh, that's my bass. Um, that's an 800 watt head. Jeez, which one's that? BP 800, and then we've got eight, a C8 and a stack of other speakers. So if that's what you want, you need, you need more speakers throwing more air and you need more wattage. Clearly that's not who this is designed for, but I'm just saying uh, that's where it stands. Thanks for watching. And again, I'm so sorry the stream didn't work out today. It didn't work last week either, but we got closer. Last week, we got like zero signal. Today, the audio was just shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bang my head against the wall until I can figure out how to fix that. In the meantime, stay well, y'all. We'll see you next time.